Welcome to an example in which we'll use the variation of parameters method to find a particular solution to a linear second order non-homogeneous differential equation. So for our example, we're first asked to verify that y sub one and y sub two satisfy the corresponding homogeneous differential equation and then find a particular solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. Well the first thing we should notice about the given differential equation is that the coefficient of y double prime is not one, it's x squared. And when applying the variation of parameters method, we do want the coefficient of y double prime to be one. So let's start by dividing everything by x squared. We don't actually have to do this to verify that y sub one and y sub two satisfy the corresponding homogeneous differential equation, but let's go ahead and do this now anyway. So now we have y double prime minus, let's write this as two divided by x squared y, and then equals three minus one divided by x squared. So this is the same non-homogeneous differential equation in a different form, and therefore the corresponding homogeneous differential equation would be y double prime minus two divided by x squared times y equals zero. Let's first verify that y sub one is a solution to this homogeneous differential equation. So if y sub one is equal to one over x, or x to the power of negative one, then y sub one prime is equal to negative one times x to the negative two, or negative x to the negative two. And therefore y sub one double prime is equal to two x to the negative three. And I will perform substitution into the homogeneous differential equation to make sure the left side is equal to zero. So y double prime is going to be two x to the power of negative three minus two divided by x squared times y, where y is x to the negative one. And this does look good. Remember we can write this as two x to the negative three minus this is the same as two x to the negative two times x to the negative one. And so this would be two x to the negative three minus two x to the negative three, which does equal zero. So now that we've verified that y sub one does satisfy the homogeneous differential equation, let's now verify that y sub two does also. So y sub two is equal to x squared so y sub two prime is equal to two x, and y sub two double prime is equal to two. And I'll perform substitution into our homogeneous differential equation. So we have y double prime, which is two, minus two divided by x squared times y equals zero, where y is x squared. And this simplifies nicely here. So we have two minus two equals zero, verifying that y sub two is also a solution to the homogeneous differential equation. And now to find our particular solution, we we'll use this formula here for big Y sub P, which we derived in a previous lesson. So let's start by finding the Ronskian of Y sub one and Y sub two, which we can see will be the denominator of each integrand. So the Ronskian of, let's write this as x to the negative one, and then x squared will be a two by two determinant, where the first row is y sub one and y sub two, and the second row will be the first derivatives, so we'll have negative x to the negative two and two x. So this will be equal to this product minus this product. Notice when multiplying here, we'll add the exponents on the variable x. So we'll have x to the negative one times two x would be two x to the zero power, or just two. And then minus, this would just be negative one. So this ends up being positive three. Which means our particular solution, big Y sub P, is gonna be equal to negative Y sub one, which is negative x to the negative one, times the integral of y sub two, which is x squared, times g of x. So let's go back and take a look at our non-homogeneous differential equation. 
when we divide it through by x squared. g of x would be equal to three minus one divided by x squared. It is important to remember that when applying this formula here, the leading coefficient of y double prime must be one, and therefore this would be g of x, not three x squared minus one. and the Wronskian is equal to three. And then we have plus y sub two, which is x squared, times the integral of y sub one times g of x, which will be x to the negative one times three minus one divided by x squared, divided by three dx. Let's simplify the integrand before we integrate. Let's factor out one-third to clear the denominator from the integrand, and let's write negative x to the negative one as negative one divided by three x. Then we'll have the integral of, let's go ahead and distribute. We would have three x squared, and then minus one dx, plus, let's go ahead and factor out the one-third, so this would be x squared divided by three, times the integral of, again we'll distribute, so we have three x to the negative one or three divided by x. And then we'd have minus x to the negative one times, this is x to the negative two, so we have x to the negative three dx. And now let's go ahead and integrate. So we'll have negative one divided by three x times, here we'd have three times x to the third divided by three, or just x to the third, minus x plus x squared divided by three, times, here we'll have three natural log absolute value of x, but since x is greater than zero, we don't need the absolute value. Then we'll have minus x to the power of negative two divided by negative two, which would be plus one half x to the negative two, or plus x to the negative two divided by two. And now we'll clear the parentheses, multiplying here, one factor of x will simplify out. So we have negative one-third x squared, and then we have plus one-third, plus, this would be x squared natural log x, and then here, notice how we'd have x to the zero, that's gonna be one, so we have plus one-sixth. So we have big Y sub P equals negative one-third x squared plus x squared natural log x, and then one-third plus one-sixth would be one-half. But there is one more thing to notice about this problem. Notice this first term in big Y sub P, negative one-third x squared, would be absorbed in the complementary function of the general solution to the non-homogeneous differential equation. Remember that the complementary function y sub c would be equal to c sub one times y sub one, which would be x to the negative one, plus c sub two times y sub two, which is x squared. So notice that negative one-third x squared would be absorbed in the second term of the complementary function, and therefore we can leave off this term in the particular solution. So we'll go ahead and just say that big y sub p is equal to x squared natural log x plus one half. It wouldn't necessarily be wrong to include this term, but it would be a duplication of terms because of this term here in the complementary function of the general solution. I hope you found this explanation helpful.